It's time to let our entities move around and attack us. So first, import both A star and node into our algorithms folder using the links below in the description. Once done, create within the entity folder two folders, one called AI and the other types. Open the AI folder and create a new script called AI and then a folder called types. This folder will contain the various AI types. Now, open the types folder and create a script called hostile enemy. Make your way over to the types folder within entity, create a new actor script, before creating a folder called components. We will also create a fighter script within our components folder, before opening our rectangular room class. Make all our variables private, placing them on one line while we're at it. And give them their getters and setters. This is to make it safer code and instill good code practices. We are also going to do the same for our tile data class. Before heading over to our game manager. With game manager open, we will start with implementing a few new variables. A float called delay time, a new list of type actor called actors, followed by a sprite called dead sprite. Add in headers called time, entities, and def. Before renaming time to base time and entity num to actor num. Entity num being renamed to actor num using the rename symbol command. Give actors and dead sprite their getters. Then scroll to our start turn method. We're going to be making a few changes here. The first being, we're going to change all entity references to actors. We're then going to be giving our else if statement a new condition that checks if the actor has a hostile enemy component. If so, it will run its AI. Else, it will just call action.skip. Next, like start turn, we're going to also exchange entities for actors in end turn. Before changing time within our turn delay enumerator method to delay time. Remove the insert identity method and add four new ones. I won't explain what they all do as they explain themselves. However, I will explain that unlike the helper methods for entities, actors have a helper method called setTime. This method uses an arrow function that returns a float after dividing base time by the number of actors within the actors list. And before leaving for map manager, rename get blocking entity at location to get blocking actor at location using the rename symbol command before exchanging all entity references for actor. Add a dictionary called nodes, its key vector to int and value node. Create a getter for width and height, followed by a getter and setter for node. Go to our update fog map method and change it to use tile maps is visible and is explored getters. Before moving to proc gen, We'll scroll down to place entities method, use the rename symbol command to change its name to place actors, and change the code within to use our rectangular room getters. With our modifications completed, it's time to handle our new classes. Let's start by opening the entity class. Copy the code within the class before removing everything except blocks movement, its getter, and the move method. We will then add a new public void method called add to game manager, which will be used to add our entity to the entities list in our game manager. One last thing, we're going to also give blocks movement a setter as we want to use it from the actor class. Save the script and open the actor class. Paste the code we copied overriding the start and update methods. Change the inheritance to entity Remove the block movement, its getter, and the move method before making the following changes to our variable. Starting from the top, we're going to rename is sentient to is alive, set it to true by default, and do the same to its getter before giving it also a setter. The field of view now initializes its list and has a getter to boot. As we will be using AI, we will also add an AI variable, which we will set by using an onValidate method which checks if an AI component is attached to the actor's game object, setting our AI variable to it. Next, within our start method, we'll add a call to add game manager, replace entity with actor, remove the unneeded if statement if its condition is sentient, followed by removing field of view, 
Now save and open the player class and give our fix updates if statement a new condition of get component actor is alive. This condition is placed here so our player can't move or attack when dead. Now save and open our fighter class. Change the public keyword to sealed in the class declaration and add a required component actor attribute. Now exchange the start and update methods with the following code. So, we are first creating our max HP, HP, defense, and power variables ints on one line before creating an actor variable called target. We set about getting getters for each variable except max HP, while also giving setters to HP and target. With the HP setter, we use mathf.max to ensure that no matter how much damage the fighter is dealt, the minimum HP is zero. Maxf.min is also used to ensure that no damage above the max HP is dealt. Once the HP is set, we use an if statement to check if HP equals zero, calling die if it does. A ton is happening in the die myth first. We debug log text based on whether a player component is attached to the same game object as the fighter class. Then we get the sprite render, using it to set its sprite variable to the dead sprite on game manager, changing its color to red and sorting order to zero. This is so other sprites can be shown over it. Next, we add remains of to its name before setting their attached actor class's blocks movement and is alive booleans to false using their getters. A final if statement is used to check if there is no player component attached, which calls the game manager's remove actor method passing in our actor component. Now moving over to actions class. All right, here we will rename everything entity related to actor. Then remove the parameter from skip action, followed by its if and else statements. Finally, it's time to show our merely action some love. We'll start by giving it a new parameter of actor actor, then create a damage int using the actor's power minus the target's defense. A string variable called attack the script is set up using the actor's name and target's name before using an if statement with its condition being if the damage is greater than zero. If it is, then a debug log is used to signify damage being done, along with utilizing the subtraction assignment operator with the target's fighter component's HB getter on the left and the damage variable on the right. Else, it just debug logs that no damage has been done before calling game manager's end turn method. Quickly add in the actor requirement in our melee action within bump action and head over to the AI class. Now, we're going to add the required component attribute to make actor and A star required components. We then create an A star variable, the requirement that you must serialize the field and give it both a getter and setter. We then make sure to use on validate to get the A star component that's attached to the game object before adding a simple public void method called move along path that takes in a vector three int target position. The method will get the vector three int grid position, passing the transform position of the game object the script is attached to into a world to cell call. It will then use the ASAR algorithm to get a vector two direction by passing both the grid position and target position into its compute method. Note that they will need to be converted to vector two ints via casting. We then call the actor class's movement action passing in the script's game object's actor components and our vector two direction. Pretty simple, right? Let's open the hostile enemy class now. We're going to proceed to do the following. We're going to add a required component attribute to make fighter required before changing the inheritance from mono behavior to AI. Then we're going to add a fighter variable of fighter, a boolean called is fighting, and then an on validate method to set the fighter and A star variables to the components attached. And then to bring everything all together, we'll then create a public void method called runner AI. The method handles are attacking, moving, and turn skipping. It does so by using an if statement to check if there isn't a set fighter target, setting a target if there isn't. Otherwise, it uses an elf if statement to check if there is a fighter target and making sure it isn't alive. This else if was solely created to counter the AI from killing the remains of the player. Continuing, we then use an if statement to check if there is a target. If there is, we get the vector three int target position by calling world to cell passing in the target's transform dot position. An if statement is then used with its conditions being is fighting or that our attached actor components field of view contains the target position. If it is true, we use another if statement to make sure is fighting is true 
before creating a float variable called target distance, where we use vector3.distance to get the distance between the hostile enemy script's game object and the target. Once again, using an if statement, its condition being target distance less than 1.5, if the condition is true, then we attack the target using action.merely action, passing into it our active component and target before returning. Else, it makes a move along path call passing in its target position before returning. Finally, if all statements weren't met, then we call action.skip action, thus ends the saga of our AI. So, open the Unity Editor. With the Unity Editor now open, we're going to select every single NC prefab, remove their entity component, and adding the actor component. Set the block's movement to true, and select our player prefab. With our player prefab now selected, we're going to add the fighter component, giving it a max HP of 30, HP of 30, a defense of 2, and a power of 5. Before selecting both Orc and Troll, adding a hostile enemy component, selecting just the Orc, and giving it max HP of 10, HP of 10, a defense of 0, and a power of 3. Going to the Troll prefab, Give it a max HP of 16, a HP of 16, a defense of 1, and a power of 4. Now open the game manager, set base time to 0.075, and setting the dead sprite to the percent symbol. Press play, and enjoy your AI. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!